algebra is above all the study of generalizations in which we use letters as variables to stand for many members of a group. The ideal is to use simple generalizations to represent as much content as possible. Certain general self-evident properties or laws have been laid down from which all else can be derived. The ideal is to have as few laws or properties as possible and to derive all else from those few general laws. However, when it comes to study of exponents and radicals, many of our textbooks neglect this very basic nature of algebra and instead give us eight or ten laws, such as you see here. Different textbooks show a varying number of laws, not always all of the ten we have here, but all books give more than the mere four which I am about to propose. Admittedly, having eight or ten laws may help some students to learn, but such a large number of laws should be considered a sort of crutch, a use of specificity before generalization comes to claim its rightful crown. Here is the schema which I have developed to summarize the laws of exponents and radicals. Sometimes I use it after having taught the ten laws, but because I find this schema to be far less intimidating, I usually show the schema first and then show how each of the ten laws comes from that. We'll see a simpler form of the schema in a moment. Sometimes I don't even show the ten laws. I just do specific problems which illustrate them such as the one we have here. When exponent work begins, students sometimes want to do something with exponents in addition and subtraction type problems. So it is good to note that there is nothing to be done to the exponents in such problems. Here is a typical addition and subtraction type problem where nothing can be done with, to the exponents. We simply combine like terms the 2x squared and the negative 5x squared are like terms, and these terms are also alike. x squared y cubed terms both. So we combine 2x squared minus 5x squared gives negative 3x squared, and then negative 3x squared y cubed and negative 2x squared y cubed give negative 5 x squared y cubed. So we have combined like terms, we have not changed the exponents at all. The simple graphic for what can be done in exponent and, and uh, radical work is as follows. In multiplication we add the exponents, in division we subtract, in raising a power to a power, we multiply the exponents, and in taking roots, we divide the exponent of the base by the index of the radical. Note that it has all the mathematical beauty and elegance that a sophisticated mathematician could desire. On the right side, we have all the four fundamental operations of arithmetic. On both left and right sides, the operations are in pairs which are inverse operations of each other. Note that raising to a power and taking roots are inverse operations of each other. These then are the four fundamental laws of exponents and radicals from which all other facts of exponents and radicals can be derived. I usually verbalize these so as to give the student words which their minds can use when encountering a problem. In multiplication of like bases, we add the exponents and write the base just once. In division of like bases, we subtract the exponents, usually bottom from top, and write the base just once. In raising a power to a power, RB, 
we multiply the exponents and write the base just once. And in taking roots, which I abbreviate TR, we divide the index of the radical into the exponent of the base and write the base just once. Before doing some specific problems, let me talk a bit about how some of the ten laws enumerated earlier can be derived from these four. A zero exponent fact derives from the quotient law when the powers of the, of the numerator and denominator are both the same. Here's a justifica justification of it, x to the third divided by x to the third, or x cubed. So if we subtract the exponents bottom from top, that would give us x to the three minus three power, which is equal to x to the zero. But we also know that anything over itself equals one, so these three x's, factors of x, divided by three other factors of x, all cancel, and so we get one times one times one, which is one. All these ones need not be written, of course, but one over one is one, so we have that one is equal to x to the zero power. And so we call that the zero exponent fact, derived nicely from the quotient law. Then we have the negative exponent fact, which um, also derives from the same law, except here we pick a case, an example, where we have the exponent of the top be smaller than the exponent of the bottom, such as this. Then when we subtract the exponent of the bottom from the top, we get x to the 3 minus 5 power, writing the base just once, and that gives us x to the negative 2 power. However, if we do it another way, by use of the definition, the very definition of exponents, says that x to the third is x times x times x, over five of them, five factors of x, and the x's cancel here, here, and here, putting ones, then we have one on top, over x squared on the bottom. So the 1 over x squared is equal to x to the minus 2 power. Things equal to the same thing are equal to each other is a famous axiom not only of mathematics but of life. So we have that anything to a negative exponent, like x to the minus 2 power, equals 1 over that same base to the positive of that exponent. That's what we call the negative exponent fact, and once again it derived easily from the quotient law of exponents. Skipping other derivations of exponent and radical facts, all of which are now either theorems or corollaries derivable from the four fundamental laws in the schema, such as we have just done, let us now look at what is perhaps the most complicated of the derivations, that of the quotient fact for radicals. Using the radical law down here, the, the taking roots is, indicates a division of exponents, we change these radicals into exponents. These exponents are understood to be first power, and I will write those in for the sake of illustration. And so we have the intro 